okay it is 6:30 so good morning everyone uh, uh you can see the topic has changed yes suddenly and uh, we have given enough uh, uh, messages since last uh, evening late evening it became to know that dr tulkar will not be able to take the class because of some serious emergency medical emergency uh we realized that uh, we should not uh, miss this opportunity to say something in this uh, because everybody will join at 6:30 so we have changed the topic and uh, today we are going to discuss a very important topic uh, because you know i what i have realized that uh, people are using uh, opioids since last many many years even the many anesthesiologists mainly they are using opioids but they do they don't know anything about these terms what is ndps act and from where the morphine is coming from where the fentanyl is coming and the people those who are practicing in palliative medicine they also keep on having a strong uh, lot of confusions that uh, who can prescribe how can prescribe uh, how can i get so all these things i mean just thought that uh, with an example of irca chains we will try to give you some explanation that what exactly it is and uh, how we can procure it so uh, i am really grateful to anuja and brijesh anuja and brijesh are assistant professor in our department and they are our students basically but now they have become faculty and immediately after after hearing the news that dr tulkar will not be able to take the class they uh, they both of us uh, sat together with me and they have prepared this presentation for all of you so i hope whatever you have any questions please write down because there will there will be lot of questions and we will try that we will we, we will try to answer everything arun keep a track on of all the questions thank you very much so uh, before going to the present proper presentation we should have a uh, we should know the history of opium in india opium is our own product this is basically a product of india and uh, you know still there are many places where people are still using uh uh this uh, poppy plants and their seeds for their just for their uh, uh, commodity purposes or for just for enjoyment so what was the history and how this ndps act came just just listen to this so uh this is uh, basically in 13th century first time this uh, is uh, arabians they have they have realized that there is something like uh, poppy plants in this country and the first brought by arabians in 16th to 17th century opium achieved the status of commodity by mughal era so mughal mughal people they used to just enjoy using opium uh, in 18th century when east india company came and uh, they started uh, cultivating because they knew they realized that there is a good cultivation and there is a in the gangetic plain it, it really grows a lot and they start op started opium cultivation and they also started illicit trading to mainly to the china so what happened that it was uh, illicit trading happening so uh, uh, there was a war between china and then 1980 1838 to 1958 there was british won the opium war against china and illicit trading became legalized and they started that yes we will we can continue the trade but it was legalized what but what happened that because of this lot of uh, illicit trading this was really creating lot of uh, problems in various parts of the country especially in china so global awakening happened and these convention came shanghai convention and we all know about all these things Uh, basically all these convention came to uh, on national and internet to curb this form of opioid use means to stop illicit trading of opioid use and opioid uh, misuse but in early 20th century what british government did they made the ndps act ndps act is narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance act basically this act was made that uh, everything should be legalized and everything should be in the licit manner and but you know what happened that whatever they have made and whatever language they have used it continued and it created a problem for all of us so this was a 1984 uh, ndps act where if somebody wanted to procure opioids there used to be so many agencies were involved and you know these all agencies were working just to prevent abuse 
without knowing that if we will just concentrate to prevent abuse there will be a lot of people those who are suffering and they will not get opioids so almost for 30 years all these agencies were involved so if at all if for example if if aims wanted to procure opioids we used to have five licenses and uh, drug controller of this state drug controller of another state from where the opioids are coming then uh, narcotic commissioner of this state and that state and then transport permit so all these fda and border security force state police everybody was involved and this was like a maze and you know it was a problem so nobody used to uh, miss who will uh, doctors will not have so much of time and they never um, give any gave any attention that i should procure opioids for my patients and it because of the complex le- le- regulations and uh, on the top of it the, the regulations were different on all, in all the states so one state was having one regulation and another state was so there was lot of complex regulations and there was lack of lack of uniformity uniformity and on the top of it there was harsh punishment for minor errors so this was passed in 19 uh, in 80s so after 30 years with lot of efforts from the activist of our own country uh, i want to name them uh, uh, because i know many of them nandini dr raj gopal uh, smriti uh, uh, Spri- uh, tripti chandan and then mr shrivastav then sudhir gupta alok mathur so all the all dr nagesh uh, means like many people have worked uh, navin has made uh, many uh, contribution so many people have worked very hard uh, in this in the la- in the formation of ndps act 2014 and uh, in on march 10th 2014 this act came, uh, act came and uh, you know it has it was lit- it it has made our life little easy what was the basis of ndps act 2014 that there was a only a single agency will be involved only a drug controller of that state wherever you are staying uh, so uh, i i think almost 82 people are join, have joined so we, from whichever state now till now uh, you know in 2021 there is further there will there will be amendment and but it is not till official so i have not i know about the points but i have not included in my lecture because i was not very sure that uh, whether i should speak or not but in 2014 if we will remember till 2014 ndps act there was a quite a comfortable life that it was a balanced and pragmatic approach with lot of responsibility on our own self what was our responsibility that we will make adequate availability of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances for our patients those who are needing for medical and scientific purposes but simultaneously this will be our responsibility by using safe use of opioids protocol that we will prevent abuse diversion trafficking and there should not be any illicit channel this my medication which i am prescribing it should not go to any illicit channels so this was the balanced and pragmatic approach of ndps act 2014 where only single agency was involved but unfortunately from 2014 to 22 almost 8 years has passed but still situation has not changed much people are still very confused people don't know that only single agency of your state is involved now there is no miss like narcotic department or excise department they, they, there is no need to be uh, that they, they should not be involved in this uh, business of opioid procurement for your patients when you want to use for your patient so almost see after 8 years we have not much developed that uh, uh, we can say still people are they keep on asking these questions and these are the question which yesterday in evening i have narrated i, I have just jot down that what people used to ask me on my telephone who can procure opioids what is rmi what is rmp what is endis what should i do if i want to treat my patient in my own clinic means they want to treat cancer pain patient and it is not in office they want to treat but they don't know how to procure opioids in their private practice uh, how to keep it safe because everybody is still worried about the punishment and harsh punishment what are my responsibility every doctors they, they think that when i am procuring opioids there is some responsibility but there are many they don't know at this that they have some responsibility when they have procured opioids 
how to do record keeping and how we can use it safely so there are so many questions and which are not clear so we just thought that we should take this lecture today and probably we will try to exp uh, to under make you understand in next 30 or 40 minutes that what are, uh, and we will try to give answer to these questions so before we go come to the actual topic what i will do i will say the few definitions so essential narcotic drugs ENDs is a very big very common uh, term but uh, the people should know that what exactly ENDs is so ENDs is the list of notified medicines which have been identified the drug controller general of india for the purpose of medical uses by rmi so if, uh, for medical purposes drug controller general of india has notified certain medicines that these medicines can any rmi recognized medical institution can keep in their hospital for moderate to severe pain what are the essential uh, that, uh, what are the ends morphine methadone codeine hydrocodone oxycodone and fentanyl out of this morphine methadone and fentanyl is available tramadol is listed tried to people have tried to list it but it is still ambiguous but yes there there is a now there is little uh, legislation over tramadol also because there was a lot of tramadol misuse has happened in india as well as the neighboring countries so it was it, it is included in 2018 what is medical institutions medical institutions we all know where the hospital any hospital where we are treating our patients diagnosing and this should be uh, administered by government or municipal corporation or municipal council what is recognized medical institute this definition you should know because uh, according to ndps act 2014 all the institutions those who are treating patients they are deemed or automatically they are recognized medical institution so recognized medical institution is officially recognized by sp state drug controller of uh, uh, your state for the purpose of what is your uh, what you can do you can purchase you can possess and you can dispense essential narcotic medication for your patient so you have a right so today you should listen to this nicely that you are officially you are is recognized by state drug controller or by government that you can purchase you can possess and you can dispense essential narcotic medication for medical and scientific purposes if you have learned how to use morphine for your cancer pain management you can do it because all those people those who are working in institutions they are automatically recognized medical institution what is an officer in charge there has to be an officer in charge of recognized medical institution so there has to be a person who will be in charge of that institution that there uh, basically everywhere there is a leader there is a person who should be in charge when it comes to opioids or narcotic medications essential narcotic medication there has to be in charge so what is who can be in charge in an rmi any person who is registered in medical practitioner under indian medical council act 2000, uh, 1956 and registered as dentist under dentist act who has undergone training in as use of ends so see this, this is a very important uh, term that person who is in charge should have gone undergone training in essentials or uh, essential narcotic medication how to use it because you know again it comes that uh, government has not said anything but uh, you know uh, this is again our responsibility because i remember that in my mbbs and md nobody has taught me how to use ends i was knowing that how to use fentanyl and morphine of, for patient in perioperative period but if pain management is concerned i was not knowing so it is again your responsibility because you should always remember the balancing act that you have to use for the patient but it should not be misused by illicit channels so it is your responsibility that you should know that you have a training enough that you can use ends now these are the prerequisite of uh, rmi that institution must have an officer in charge officer in charge must be qualified either by medical council of india or dental council of india the institution must have facility to safe storage of pnt by double locking system cupboard and two locks m facility should have basic infrastructure for is like a staffing those who can be uh, who is responsible those who can uh, dispense opioids and facilities to provide proof of space for personal for uh, mandatory keeping so i uh, mean like if somebody comes and inspect you should be able to give the uh, all your data 
carefully and you should show that whatever you are doing is doing under the law these are the guidelines for uh, rmps so if a person who wants to uh, i said that uh, if was a person wants to open a private clinic then what exactly they can do rmp can also have a license of essential narcotic drugs only thing the quantity of which government has set quantity uh, of all these medication they have specified that morphine for formulation they can keep 500 mg codeine 2000 mg hydrocodone and is not available so we'll not discuss fentanyl patch they can keep two patches of 12.5 mg and 25 mg methadone uh, upper limit because methadone came after uh, this ndps act so their upper limit is not yet mentioned in the ndps act so if at all you wants to procure opioids for your private clinic you can get these this much medication but it is when if you have you are getting lot of patients and these medications are less you can again reapply so you can start uh, you can have a very good repo with drug controller of your states that i am using this i am keeping it in the double lock i am keeping the record whatever medication i am procuring from the, uh, the uh, from the dealer and you can keep again you can extend your license or you can renew your rmi status so now i will stop sharing over here and uh, i hope till now there is no question if there are any questions uh, you can write down in the chat box definitely we will answer and i hope you have understood that ultimately it was our own product and uh, 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 Bridgesh, you can. I am stopping. Uh, I am sharing the slides, so you can start sharing. So uh, till now, uh, Bridgesh, open your mic and start. Okay. So right. good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Yes, start. So now, Bridgesh will tell you that if an institution how to procure uh, ENDs, how to stock and dispense in a practical manner. which they have learned in their residency program and he has made all the slides himself please go ahead rajesh thank you ma'am uh, good morning all uh, i am discussing a little bit about the procurement stocking and dispensing of essential narcotic drugs uh, before uh, uh, discussing about details of uh, procurement of uh, essential narcotic drugs i would like to discuss uh, very uh, little about the uh, procurement of any drug Uh, in any institute or any hospital, uh, when there is a demand for any drug, it will be raised to purchase committee or store of that institute. Then uh, they will directly contact to distributor, and then uh, the drug has been procured and stocked in their medical store. And as and when required, uh, it will be dispensed to patient or uh, respective wards. And then again, when there is a decrease in number of uh, medicine, then again demand has been raised. Uh, similarly in case of essential narcotic drugs uh, the institute now become a uh, to rmi has uh, it has already been discussed by ma'am and uh, if uh, there is any private clinic then it will become a, a clinic of registered medical practitioner the, they both have to apply to state drug controller uh, by using form 3f and uh, from uh, state drug controller uh, and if uh, any institute has apply for renewal and and they want more uh, uh, opioids then uh, they will use from 3i and 3j then uh, this drug state drug controller issue a purchase order in form 3g from then the distributor is now become the licensed distributor this licensed distributor are the government approved distributors and uh, we can procure uh, peers from this licensed distributors only then uh, this licensed distributor uh, supply this opioids in uh, special consignment and along with form 3c uh this uh, opioids has been now reached into the institute and uh, there is provision to uh, procure this uh, opioids into the double lock system along with a de dedicated pharmacist who will look after the essential narcotics sex and and he should or she should uh, uh, dispense this to patients and uh, he must have to uh, maintain a record in 3h uh, then when we uh, 
dispense opioids to patients, every time we have to uh, maintain all the records in Form 3E. And now in next few, uh, few slides, I will discuss about details of all these forms. Uh, before uh, going details about the different forms, I would like to discuss uh, very little about the uh, cultivation and production of uh, opium and all this cultivation and manufacturing of opioids has been done under umbrella control of NDPS Act and uh, it will be uh, controlled by the Central Bureau of Narcotics that is situated at uh, Gwalior and uh, they provide licensing for cultivation of affairs to few farmers uh, in uh, selected district of MP, UP and Rajasthan only. And they give a minimum qualifying yield, permission for minimum qualifying yield. Uh, farmer cannot uh, produce more than uh, that uh, minimum qualifying yields and all their cultivation has been supervised by the Central Bureau of Narcotics. And when the, the cultivation has been completed, all op um, poppy seeds has been tendered and transferred to government approved opium and alkaloid work, work, which is also under control by the Central Bureau of Narcotics. Uh, this uh, there are in India. There are only two plants are uh, situated. One at uh, Ghazipur and another at Neemach. Both plants have a two main section. One is for opium factory and another uh, is for alkaloid plants. Opium factory just uh, extract the dry opium from poppy seeds and and alkaloids. Uh, plant extracts the uh, alkaloids from dry opium. This extracted opium has been now sold to different government approved manufacturers for production of different salts and like codeine, morphine, dihydrocodone and other salts. And in India, we only export dry opium and uh, as uh, demand and uh, product is, demand for codeine is high, we only import codeine from uh, outside, rest all uh, opioids has been manufactured in India only. Uh, now I will, uh, I'm going to discuss detail about the different forms. Whenever any institute want to become a, a registered medical institute, which is, uh, which, is, which is after NDPS Act is now become deemed. And uh, we just have to inform to state drug controller that we are going to start uh, pain management or palliative med medicine center. And uh, we want to procure opioids. Uh, we have to send a requisition in form 3F. This is the form 3F, which comprises of uh, uh, name of the head of the institute and num uh, we have to send the number of patients which, are, which were treating in previous year. If we are applying for first time, this should be kept blank. And then uh, number five, we have to send uh, the details of medical practitioner who all going to use the essential narcotics drugs uh, in that institute. Then uh, for any uh, private practitioner, they also have to apply in for form 3F to the, their state drug controller. Then state drug controller provide them a permission to procure the drugs. That is maximum quantity of essential narcotics drugs, which has also been discussed and the number of uh, medicine is very less like uh, for morphine it's only uh, 50 tablets of 10 milligram morphine and for fentanyl patch only a person can uh, procure two patch uh, the number is very low so, so to increase the number then again that re registered medical practitioner has to apply along with form 3b to that state drug controller that I want to procure more medications because my, my patients has more and I have to require more. Then again, that state drug controller provide the permission to cap more number of medications and uh, this after applying in the form 3B. Uh, this 3B, uh, we have to just mention the name of medication and uh, quantity required. Then after getting approval, the registered medical practitioner has to uh, maintain a record in form 3D. It's a daily basis record keeping register and per day uh, the registered medical practitioner has to uh, keep records of all essential narcotics that he has procured. 
This is the uh, form 3D. It's a daily account per day. Uh, registered medical practitioner has to mention the opening stock and uh, if he has uh, during that day, if he received any quantity, then he has to enter that and the number of uh, medication has dispensed to the patient. And then finally, at the end of the day, he has to mention the closing stock. This should be done on daily basis. Uh, now coming to the institute, after applying in form 3F, the state drug controller provide a form 3G to the institute. This form 3G is a, a just certificate of recognition. Whenever we apply first time, this certificate of re recognition has been given by the state drug controller. Uh, this uh, certificate has mentioned the details of the institute and it also uh, mentioned that the, this certificate cell enforced from this to this date. Mostly it will given for the four years and then we have to apply for, uh, again for the renewal. Then along with copy of form 3G, we have to apply to the license distributor that I have, we have got the permission and uh, we uh, require following number of medications. Then this license distributors provide all medications uh, in a special consignment along with form 3C. This to uh, to the center. This form 3C is comprises the date and time of dispatch of the consignment, license number of issuing authority, registration number of vehicle, and when whenever we receive, we also have to check and uh, we have to mention the date and time of receiving of com uh, consignment and we ha also have to check that complete uh, uh, consignment has been received by us. <coughs> Then all uh, essential narcotic drugs has to be kept at, at a designated single designated area which have a double lock uh, system and a de designated pharmacist should be there. And this uh, designated area has to be marked in a map and it should be sent to state drug controller or commissioner. And it, uh, this area should not be changed before prior intimation to state drug controller. Uh, then here the designated pharmacist has to uh, maintain a record on daily basis in 3H. At RMI level, RM, sorry, uh, at the registered medical practitioner level, this, this form is form 3D. But for an institute, this is a form 3H. Uh, the content of both these forms are same. Uh, in institute also the pharmacist has to maintain the opening stock on daily basis, quantity received and quantity dispensed and at the end of the day he, uh, he should maintain the closing stock. Then uh, this drugs uh, is been uh, distributed to the different wards and for patient and whenever uh, uh, we dispense this medicine to uh, patients we have to maintain a record in 3E. Uh, this is a 3E. Uh, it contains the details of patient along with the, his complete postal address and brief description of illness. And also we have to mention the uh, whether patient has been registered any other uh, palliative care center or uh, any other center from where he can get uh, opioids. And details of drug has uh, been mentioned properly uh, in this form and its form should be shined by the registered medical practitioner or the uh, uh, all uh, doctors who are in, in that institute and also the their uh, medical council registration number along with the uh, their full name in capital then uh, uh, when at the end of the year actually the for the opioids it's uh, we have to send our annual requirement, annual consumption at the end of uh, November uh, to again to state drug controller in form 3I. This form 3I is a uh, total consumption of the year and it should be sent at the uh, th 30th November. Then this is form 3I. This is an annual return. Uh, we have to just mention that total quantity in the year we have received total quantity dispense and at the uh, sending this form 3I, how much medicine has been available at the institute. 
then also along with 3i we have sent we have to send form 3j 3j is the uh, form for the requirement of next year in this form 3j we can increase according to number of patients or we can just check uh, how up, approval from <coughs> approval which, which we received and uh, the number of uh, patients then we can increase the number of medications from 3j this is a form 3j it's also comprises the name of drugs and quantity which we dis uh, discussed previous year and in this we can estimate our annual requirement and this can be slightly increased according to number of patients uh, then again uh, after receiving form 3i and 3j the street drug controller issue the order of purchase then this uh, order of purchase has been sent to license distributor then again license distributor send the medications along form 3c this is a uh, purchase order it contains the details of drug and the quantity which we uh, is, uh, received now coming to uh, i think you all have seen different form 3b 3c 3e h then i'm just discussing very uh, briefly about what what are they uh, just to summarize it like for a registered medical practitioner we can use b c d e b is just for the first time for uh, special authorization to increase the number of medications C is a consignment note when the person has received the medications. Then D for daily record keeping at registered medical practitioner level, and E uh, for the patient. So, so B C D E has completed the R M P level. Then coming to F G F is for the first time when we apply for uh, uh, issue to become a recognized medical institute or for renewal of certificate after ap 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 apply in form 3f we got the permission and certificate of recognition that is in 3j then coming to h i and j uh, sorry is 3g coming to 3h i and j 3h is daily record keeping at hospital level or at institute level then 3i is an annual return and 3j is estimate for next year uh, now i think many have the question about what about the form 1 2 and 3a because we started from 3b the, the this one is the license for growing opium who is the application to grant for license for opium poppy cultivation and 3a is for manufacture to manufacture the drug uh, now uh, i would like to sh uh, share a few photographs of, of our institute how we can uh, uh, doing uh, record keeping and uh, double locking system at our institute uh, this is a double lock system for uh, uh, stop uh, stocking of opioids uh, lock one and this is the lock two and uh, these are the medications uh, along with uh, 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 different forms we also kept uh, uh, online record keeping of all the patients and all the medication that we dispense from our institute and uh, we have a two uh, linked institute one is the IS, uh, dr brish and another is a national cancer institute both center are 50 kilometers apart but we are using this uh, single uh, online system to maintain a record of uh, opioids in both the institute and we have uh, made a system that when patients came patient can came either of the center he he or she can visit either ISCH or NCI and we have a, a system that we can track a patient that last visit where he has got the medication either from ISCH or NCI so uh, we may track that patient has not been defaulted or he's uh, uh, overtaking uh, overusing the medications and uh, in our system uh, there is a red flag science also when patient uh, visits before their due date 
uh, our system is automatically says that patient has a adequate number of medications then we uh, go to detailed discussion with the patient how he can use and where all medication has been finished before due date then through this we can get that the patient uh, is not uh, uh, defaulter or he is not uh, abuse of opioids uh, this is a printed form of 3e uh, after entering in this software system we, we generate a hard copy of form 3e and this form 3e has been sent to our pharmacist and uh, he kept this form for next two years as per ndps act and rule uh, in case of uh, backup when there is software failure or uh, some issues has been uh, there then uh, we send a hard copy of this form 3e to a pharmacist for the dispense of medications along with uh, this record has been kept in uh, different register this is a form 3h uh, uh, this should be kept at uh, pharmacist level and also as we have a huge center and different wards has required uh, essential narcotic drugs. So this form 3H has been kept in all different wards also and uh, respective nursing staff and especially the in charge has uh, kept a record of all essential narcotic drugs at, devil, at their level. Along with this, uh, there is a third system, which is a hospital, e-hospital system that is AIMS inbuilt system. And uh, this is for the record keeping of all medications. We can check through this also uh, how many medication has been issued to uh, different wards and how many medication has been dispensed to different patients. In this uh, e-hospital system, uh, nursing staff is also uh, uh, keeping record of patient wise uh, dis, uh, dis, uh, dispensing of medications. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bridges. Thank you very much for excellent uh, uh, overview how to procure, how to store, and how to dispense medication. And thank you, Bridges. Once again, I know that you are also not well, but uh, you, uh, I asked you that can you present, and you said yes, I can present, and we can visualize that it was a, if, if you were having a difficult time. So now uh, uh, everybody now must be knowing that what a what an systematic way we have created a system. NDPS Act is one, but we have created our own system by keeping a record keeping in, in, on internet on the computer. We have created our own software and we have linked National Cancer Institute and IRCH 50 kilometers away. So one patient, one system. And if there are anything which is not going in the right direction, there are red flag signs. So this type of system you can create because the basis is there. NDPS Act is there, but you can also create this kind of a system, the foolproof system. So now I will uh, uh, ask Dr. Anuja, our again, uh, they all are my uh, assistant professors and my faculties are very, very hardworking. So again, within no time, Anuja and Rijesh, both of both, they were prepared with the, this presentation. So Anuja will tell you how we, uh, what are the pattern at, of IRCH of last 15 or 20 years. So Anuja, please go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I will keep it very short and uh, I would be discussing uh, the safety measures that we are taking at our institute and our experience about uh, dispensing and procuring uh, opioids at IRCH, uh, Ames New Delhi. So basically this is uh, this was a retrospective study uh, which we conducted and uh, uh, we studied the opioid uh, dispensing patterns for about 13 years since 2008 to 2020. So um, it's not moving. Um, so uh, basically, uh, so we started uh, uh, to uh, uh, dig out data from the opioid, uh, the pharmacy of our institute, and we found that uh, since 2006 to 2020, the opioid uh, prescriptions, the, uh, the number of patients were continuously increasing, of course, since the cancer incidence is also increasing. So uh, we had 4,200 uh, 
of new patients of cancer registered in 2006, which was continuously increasing uh, to 17,000 patients in 2019. However, in 2020, due to obvious reasons, due to the pandemic and the various barriers it brought along, uh, the number of uh, new patients decreased. And um, then we also studied the uh, total morphine consumption of the institute, uh, that is only the oral morphine. We did not include the IV morphine to avoid bias due to other uses, like perioperative uses of IV morphine. So we only used oral morphine consumption, uh, which increased from 3.6 kgs in 2006, and it increased uh, a, in parallel to the number of patients um, to 11 kgs in 2019. And then, of course, um, uh, since the number of patients decreased in 2020, we also saw a fall in oral morphine consumption, which was only 5 kgs. Now, uh, to, um, being uh, to avoid being misled uh, by the uh, increase in morph morphine consumption, we decided to uh, calculate the amount of morphine which was dispensed per patient visit. So, uh, which we found that there was a uh, almost a, 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 a horizontal or a non-wavering uh, rise in morphine uh, in contrast to the number of patients that we were seeing. So we felt that we were on a good uh, trend and we were using morphine safely. Now, uh, we also found that diversion incidence was nil. This was uh, based on another study that I would be discussing. Um, when we dis, uh, calculated the annual percentage change in morphine consumption, we found there was a decrease in morphine consumption, uh, especially owing to a 50% annual decline in 2020. Uh, morphine consumption per grams in capita also decreased um, in 2020. However, if you compare from 2008 to 2019, it had been uh, unwavering. So this was uh, another study that was conducted in our institute. Um, it, we studied patients who were receiving um, morphine for more than 12 months with at least 60 milligram on the last prescription. prescription. And we uh, evaluated these patients for uh, any mental use, uh, mental disorder or any substance use disorder. So initially uh, we uh, evaluated the mental status of the patient. We did not find any patient with a major depressive disease or psychotic behavior. We then use the assess screen tool to um, study if any of the patients were uh, uh, suffering from uh, substance abuse. And um, then we uh, did the addiction behavior checklist and we found only 15% patients who had a score of more than three. Then these patients were subjected to psychiatric consultation, but none of these patients were found to have opioid use disorder. So the whole point of me explaining all this is that we have been using morphine for almost, we studied these uh, patients for 15 years and uh, we have not found so far any patients with um, substance use disorder. Now, uh, the uh, iron, irony is that even if morphine was included in the essential drug uh, list in way back in uh, 1970s, morphine is still uh, considered to be a controlled substance for obvious reasons. And why I say obvious is because uh, everybody, all me medical health practitioners, including us who are using morphine, um, we do have a, a certain amount uh, of uh, barrier or fear of um, harming our patients. So why uh, in our institute, uh, we have been able to use this safely is because we have um, a very robust uh, education system. We uh, make sure that all the new healthcare professionals who join the department, residents, faculties, everybody has to undergo uh, training for using uh, morphine. Then we also have frequent audits. We use safety protocols. And uh, not just uh, educating the healthcare professionals, we also need to educate the caregivers as well as the patients about side effects, their fears, and we have to uh, uh, Needless to say, there has to be an immaculate assessment of pain and not just the physical pain, but you studying pain as a total pain concept. So this is a photo of uh, the instruction. There's, a, there's an instruction pamphlet that we distribute to all patients who are receiving morphine. It is available in English as well as Hindi. 
So we give instructions to patients um, addressing their concerns for addiction, for side effects, how to use these uh, drugs. For example, uh, we also mentioned in the uh, that instruction pamphlet that they may suffer from side effects such as drowsiness, vomiting in the beginning. Then they, it may also cause constipation and they should not stop the medication or increase the dose without uh, uh, consulting us. We give them an emergency number so that they could call us. And um, uh, uh, also it is very important to tell them that this pain medication is only for them and it should not be shared with anybody else at home who is having pain, which is not even cancer related. So um, uh, another important part is uh, prescribing these, uh, when, while prescribing these, you sh must follow certain rules of uh, prescription uh, which should be actually followed for every drug, but very essential for narcotic substances. So uh, your handwriting should be clear. The documentation of patient's address, full name, as well as your doc documentation of your sign and your name should be uh, legible. And uh, you should mention the daily dose clearly in the language which the patient understands. If the patient is illiterate, you could use symbols such as uh, uh, small dots to um, symbolize the drugs. And uh, you should mention the duration of the prescription for how long you are uh, giving the prescription for. And uh, you can give a contact details in case of any emergency. So this is an example of a, a good, good prescription. As you can see, all the uh, instructions are given in capital writing so that they are legible. Uh, then they have been dated and signed by the um, medical practitioner. Also, um, the patient's name uh, address has been mentioned, then the total number of uh, drugs that have to be given at time, uh, what time, at what intervals has been mentioned, and uh, total duration of the prescription has been mentioned, and um, patients have been uh, given instructions uh, and to maintain the pain diary. If any drug has been stopped, it has been mentioned. If the patient has been receiving any concurrent therapy like palliative radiotherapy. This also should be mentioned, so especially in cancer patients because palliative radiotherapy and chemotherapy will have uh, a neolytic effect on the tumor and thereby decrease pain. And so the pain physician should keep in mind that this patient might require to decrease or maybe increase the uh, drugs uh, dosages. So um, to summarize, uh, what I want to say is that to use morphine safely um, for our patients, we should um, assess them um, thoroughly, use the total pain concept, treat pain as a total pain, uh, address their psychological and social pain as well, and then uh, keep yourself updated and educate everybody that works in the team who manages pain and not just that, you have to educate the patients as well as the caregivers. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, uh, before I summarize everything, uh, there are a lot of questions. So we will start answering those questions and then I will share some more slides if we will have time. Uh, uh, so uh, Arun, would you, uh, I will read the questions because there are a lot of questions. Uh, Okay, so uh, this uh, is from 19077. I don't know whose name is this. If patient is getting narcotic directly from dealer after getting DD12 form duly signed by private practitioner, then also do we have to keep a record? So ideally, uh, you know, dealer will keep the record, but uh, you should have a record. If you are writing a prescription to any of your patient, then you should have a record so that you will know that when next time this patient will come. So this is basically, I will not uh, recommend that if uh, you are in a big institution and working for almost thousands of patients you are looking after, you should have their, your own system. You should have your own pharmacy in your, inside the hospital, but this is also a system which works very well. And you should have a record in wherever you want. If you want to keep in this diary or you want to keep this duly formed, signed form uh, carefully. Then uh, PMD, uh, I don't know, PMD is what. Are these all regulations also applicable to IV? Uh, yes, these are uh, also applicable to IV and fentanyl and morphine. Only thing, 
we keep using iv fentanyl and morphine in peri operative period but we don't know what are the regulations so i i, I hope that all the anesthetists those who have joined this class they must be knowing now that this is a, there is a system which works uh, uh, when we are procuring opioids then uh, uh, barhamuddin is asking ma'am can you please share the examples of various certificate which would, which would actually be required this is what dr bridges has done so all these slides are going to be there with you so dr bridges has shown so beautifully well that if when we want to procure opioids what we should do which form will work in which form you will get the license in which form you will get the, you will you will uh, procure you will ask the dealer to uh, send the medication and then everything he has explained so beautifully well so all these forms were there and all these slides will be there with you in case required we will again uh, again uh, um, explain you uh, on our telephone if you if you have not you are not very clear i will send the telephone number of brijesh me and anuja so you can ask personally but i hope everybody has understood various forms that how to stop dispense and pres prescribe then again 1977 is asking kindly let me know how can i prescribe narcotic pain for my own per this is also we have said that is registered medical practitioner how they can procure opioids i think everything was clear everything we have said very beautifully well i think brijesh has explained you that if you want to open a private clinic and you want to keep narcotics what is your responsibilities and how you will do this so again this is available but dd12 form uh, uh, process also works where are the forms available for rmps these are all on the websites if you want you can procure from the institutions you can procure this uh then again brahmuddin is asking also different uh, different states may different you issues if somebody someone can share their experience so yes again uh, this is again a very unfortunate part that ndps act was formulated in 2014 but the information government has done their work but the information has not reached to many states this was very uh, this state of affair was really bad of, uh, before few years but now all the states are realizing their uh, responsibilities and they know now and what is ndps act 2014 i know many states like uh, bihar srinagar uh, madhya pradesh uttar pradesh now there is the problem is less because now they know the rules but still there are some states they are following their own rules but ultimately there is a uniform rule for by government of india department of revenue so ideally if you want to practice in your own states you should brief up these rules to your drug controller of your state and you should procure opioids based on the these rules uh yes iv morphine can also be requested in the same form what was your uh, sample size sample size was more than 10000 patients we see per year so it was uh, the record of more than 10000 patients and what we have realized that more than 60 mg of morphine per for more than a year was less than 1000 patients were taking means most of the our patients we have not survived for more than a year and out of this only 13% patients were fitting in the criteria where the score is more score was more than 3 that's why we have sent all these patients to drug de addiction center and the psychiatrist proper in, uh, psychiatrist they have evaluated them and they have found that these patients were not having morphine induced disorders dr stanley is asking when a patient is at home unable to use oral morphine can family give parental morphine under supervision of yes we can give yeah we are giving to a lot of our patients we are giving uh, the baxter infusion pump and they are using morphine uh, at home in sub in the subcutaneous or iv form and uh, miss like most of the time it is for 7 days or 3 days uh, refill and they come and refill we re we are refilling but everything is recorded because we give the record in their own card we keep the record in our own register and in our own computer dr saroja is asking drug controller from karnataka mentioned it's only for oral preparation and for injection you have to take no 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 it is not for injection no everything is a iv and oral everything is under the same rule uh, uh then thank you so much thank you for useful presentation what is the fee to get the license there is no fee 
uh, Kankasha, like Bihar, does not have an online system in place. Online system, Kankasha, we have created our own. This was because our almost 60, 70 residents are using this system. So we wanted to make the uniformity. If you really want to learn or you want to replicate, you can come sometime to AIMS and we will. We are happy to share the system. Uh, software, this is basically a software which we have created and it was almost for a year. A uh, few of our residents and uh, faculty, Bridgesh was one, uh, they have worked very hard to create this software and this online system to make it uh, very foolproof that there should not be any problem. Uh, uh, and extensive follow-up making of it. So, uh, you know, this follow-up and this record keeping, everything will be simple when you have an online system. And, you know, it looks like that it is a very complicated system. But this is not so complicated. Uh, you know, uh, once you will create a system and system will be in a place, everything will be, you know, uh, uh, everything will roll around. Uh, automatically, everything will go on. So if I will ask any of my resident uh, that, oh God, do you know that uh, from where we are getting, they, they are not knowing till the time we give this presentation because everything is so smooth because this you have to create your own system. Uh, wherever you are working, you have to create a foolproof system based on the NDPS Act. Uh, Nidhi, very informative presentation, Nitu. Uh, additional recommendation 2021 Nitu. I know, but I am not very sure that whether I should uh, dis uh, discuss this and there was no time also. Uh, Pranit, I want to state in home care institutes, how shall I procure narcotic? Yes, home care institutions again, uh, right now, uh, there are no, uh, because again, uh, the government of India has asked us to make the guidelines for home care and hospice. And in that, I uh, really uh, advocated that they should be uh, in the same system. And hopefully, there will be a simpler system. Otherwise, till the time, the system is same for all the uh, home care institutions also. Okay. Uh, then, can I get a... Everything is available on the website. Please open the website and everything will be available. Achha, it is, Parvesh is asking whether it is mandatory to have a qualification in palliative. So again, see, NDPS Act has not defined any qualification in 2014. But government of India was uh, has defined or I, I, I say that this is again our own responsibility that we should learn how to uh, prescribe opioids, how to keep it safe, and then only we should start prescribing. Uh, there are three days training available from government of India, then and IEPC part A, part B, if you will do course, then you will you are eligible. There are fellowship program from IPM Calicut and uh, Pallium India, then you are eligible. Diploma from Cardiff University people, they are eligible and MD obviously they are eligible, MD palliative medicine. But again, I say that these are there are no clear cut defined qualification till now. I have not, but definitely it is our responsibility that we should be trained enough to prescribe opioids for our patients so that we can make it a safe system of using it. So now two more minutes and then uh, mm -hmm. Uh, then only, uh, then, uh, so uh, two more minutes and then we, uh, this is the, any other questions if somebody wants to ask. Uh, Archana, I can't share my screen. Um, Dr. Anuja, can you stop screen sharing? Yeah, now you can share them. Okay. So uh, anything somebody wants to ask? Some for anything. Otherwise, I don't think there are any other slides. Uh, I have uh, extra slides, but uh, if somebody wants, IEPC Academy. So, if there are no questions, I think I can stop over here. Ma'am, there is I, a question. Okay, what is the question? Uh, Dr. Deepa wants to know what is the procedure to return expired or unused drugs? So expired and unused drugs, again, there is no uh, clear-cut uh, guidelines or clear-cut procedure, but uh, definitely we have created a system that if uh, there is a 
uh, expired medication definitely it will be a problem because uh, then you will have to call a drug controller and you have to destroy in front of them but uh, return if unused medication are there you can with the same uh, number uh, UH unique unique identification number you can keep and you can uh, make it in your keep in your pharmacy and can use for other people okay so uh, I just want to say one more thing that this this workshop, one hour workshop, uh, 2000, like 2022 conference that is 29th International Conference of Indian Association of Palliative Care, the same workshop will be, we will be doing for one hour. So uh, probably uh, if you were really want to make use of, uh, under you want to understand something which you have not understood, you can call me directly. But you can, you should also uh, attend that workshop. Okay. So I think it is seven thirty. Nisha has sent me a lot of information. I don't know. So Doctor Anjum has said that there are very less registration for that workshop. Please you use, uh, use this opportunity and uh, register as much as possible. So uh, it's just, these were my last slide that oh, we should not keep opiophobia. This is our own product, which we are producing in our country, maximum all from the world. These are, this is the natural existing resource and cheapest opiate available for our patient. We should use all the safety protocols, make your own protocols based on your uh, infrastructure and available, available resources. Use morphine safety circuit, which was published long time back in IAP, Indian, Indian General of Palliative Care. By building trust, creating awareness, empowering physician, assigning responsibilities, making it available all the time, educating society, safe dispensing practice throughout the uh, uh, journey, supervision, and uh, taking care of total pain relief. All these, and importantly, that using intervention wherever possible. So all these are steps which you can uh, follow, and definitely you will feel more confident. And if you will not use if you will not learn how to use opioids, you will not be able to give pain relief to the children. So, you know, in adult, we can use tramadol, we can use trependadol, we can use many medication and we can try to control the pain. But if these type of children will come, we can't use tramadol and trependadol to these children and we have to learn how to use morphine for making pain relief to giving, uh, relief, suffer, relieving their suffering. Thank you very much. So we have taken two minutes extra, but uh, we have tried our best to explain you what exactly the system works which in, in place. So thank you very much. We will see you again on next Monday at 6.30 sharp. Before 6.30, please join.